It is now the time of 2.30, and we are ready to start our joint committee meeting with DPW and also public safety. I'm glad to be joined here today by our president, huh? President Hudson, Councilor Hogan, Councilor Caldwell, Councilor Paniagua, okay. Councilor Majoke, and myself, Councilor Gathers, along with Commissioner Robinson, members of the DPW. Corey, thank you, brother. Yeah. And Corey, we appreciate you as well. Thank you. Okay, so who's stepping up to talk about it and take it away first? Director of Special All right. Special Projects. <clears throat> the Director. <laughs> take it away first, Neil. Good afternoon, Council. Um, thank you for calling this. Uh, we are here today to talk about the topic of automated speed enforcement in school zones. So this is a very broad topic, but there are a couple of technologies that we're gonna talk about today. We have a number of bullet points and some basic information handed out to you. We're gonna run through this essentially step by step and then uh, work into any questions. So uh, the, the DPW is requesting of the Common Council a resolution of support for automated enforcement in school zones. The reason for that being, in order to use these technologies, it requires an act of state legislature. So this is just a resolution. It's not a binding compact. It's not a contract. It doesn't uh, link us into any sort of specifics. It's just saying we support these items um, and we'll take that to our uh, representative, Assembly Magnarelli, who is the chair of the Transportation Council, and that starts the process. Uh, we intend to pursue these technologies uh, to use as traffic calming measures to promote safety and prevent injury in areas around schools. This aligns with the city's effort to move towards a vision zero approach which is related to reducing serious injuries, fatalities on our road network. So the DPW will partner with the administration, the council, and of course SPD to craft a program and solicit proposals to implement this initiative. So again, we're just here to talk about a resolution here today and support any sort of specifics on a program, who, what, where, when, and why is would come later. Um, all would be invited in that. So the DPW has researched the deployment of these technologies, uh, including in what they look like in other municipalities across the state. That will help inform our program, uh, including the following. Again, this is intended for school zones. We have to ask our state representatives to allow us to use this technology. Uh, we have to be specific about where we want this technology, including the number of school zones, the placement, all of those specifics, as well as our intention to start the program with a small area and expand over time. So with something like this, we don't want to turn it on full force right at the beginning, but it's something that we would like the room to run uh, as this is an ask of the state. You know, quick question for you, right? Um, I'm not opposed to it because anything we can to keep our babies safe, I'm with it. But my thing is this, you said that you don't have a program to give us. I think it's a little, um, how do I say this? To not give us a program and we're just signing on the dotted line, I think I, even if you have a draft, or something that you can give to the council so we can follow exactly what you're doing. Sure, we can provide that. Um, but again, we're at the very I beginning get steps. I get it, but then in the middle, then we'll be looking at a program that we maybe push, have pushback on, and then that's when all the conflict starts. Understand completely, and again, that's why we, uh, any, any further steps would involve the council, would involve the administration, would involve SPD, so Again, baby steps right now, but we'll absolutely sure get you that cut information. And dry, but I mean, and I know, you know, because I know it was one up there by Lincoln, so I know it's really kind of cut and dry. But to have it, the more information we have, the better it is for you. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Maybe to President Hudson's point, why why do we need the state legislation 
to implement this technology? Why wouldn't we be able to do it? We do not have the ability to implement this technology. It's a, an item that's reserved by the state. So it takes specific legislation for any city to enact these technologies. So we have to ask for a very specific program from New York State. All, all sorts of electronic technology, is that true? or what, Any automated what? enforcement, so uh, very specific types of cameras, speed cameras, red light cameras, those types so of those items. So those red light cameras, we'd have to have state legislation? So Neil, also, so you, just so I have an understanding of this, when it comes to like the lights near the schools, is that still state or is that something here we can control? We have to ask the state for that technology, to use that technology. No, just to like modify or change or, you know, like the red light, the green lights, yellow. Yeah, so generally speaking, yes. Um, the majority of the signals in the city are owned and operated by the city. There are some that are owned and operated by the state but uh, the vast majority are the cities. So if there's a, an adjustment, um, we typically make those. And a lot of the times you'll see us work on crosswalks to give students more time to cross, things like that. We do that in-house. So we do all, there, but there is some that are owned by the state and own, some owned by the city. Right. So, okay. Ew. So this technology picks your, your plate and then they send, I mean, if you're going over the mileage, the, the 10 miles per over, if you're speeding 10, 10 miles or over, right? How is it that you're going to... Um, How do you receive it? Yeah. So this is similar to something that you might see on the throughway, uh -huh. uh, where you have a toll reader that focuses on the plate. It's not the individual operating the machine. Um, it's the plate itself. So okay. uh, works to use the DMV's information to issue a citation uh, based on the ownership of the vehicle. So, so, so Neil, <clears throat> so what, what, what is it about this technology? Is it the automation in itself that, that need state authorization or the machine in itself? Uh, it's the technology itself. Uh, we have to ask to use these technologies New York State uh, has made that decision for us. They want us to come to them to ask, with very specific asks, to use any sort of cameras like this. So I'm asking that because I have seen it in the city. <clears throat> for example, if you come down from Anadaga Hill and you're coming into the city through, um, through Seneca Turnpike, there is that automated mm -hmm. speed reader. Did we have to also seek state authorization for that because that, that's where I'm going with it because if if it is the automation itself or just this the, the machine because they, they two different because that one was put in and I don't know if if we had seek state authorization to put that in so so what part of this is is the state that's a good question so uh, what you're referring to is a radar sign which flashes your speed when you go by it tells you exactly how fast you're going those we are free to implement and we do have the capital project to implement them spoiler alert they'll be showing up very soon uh, in school zones and elsewhere as well but those don't require an act of state uh, legislature because there's no ticket um, there's no additional action included there it just provides you with a read of what your current speed is these technologies would capture speed information but also issue the citation as well so that's why it takes the additional act so this is a license plate reader then that's what I was, that was my question it it does read license plates, but it's not the system that tracks where license plates are traveling or tracks motorists or anything like that. It doesn't communicate with, say, a mobile plate reader or anything like that. It is a fully separate item. And one more thing. So, Greg Lowe, let me ask you this. So, we don't have home rule over this? This is our state? Correct. Greg, Greg Lowe, Chief Policy Officer. Um, we do not have o uh, our own existing home rule. We would ultimately have to uh, have home rule legislation approved by, by the uh, council uh, in order for it to be implemented. So we need a sponsor of the assembly and a sponsor of the state senate for this too? That would be the case when the legislation is ultimately put forward. So when he says issue a citation, what exactly does that mean? Do they, they 
does it go right to the police department? Yep, SPD is involved. And the specifics on citations, violations, fees, all of that would come with the further development of the program. Uh, that is, again, a very specific question that we intend to answer, but it's not part of the resolution. We're not going to set a, a dollar amount or anything like that. So, so what city in our, our, in our state use this technology? There are a few that use them. We took a look specifically at New York City as well as Albany. They had a lot of information available. They were very forthcoming with their information in our requests as well. And they had to follow the same procedure? That exact same procedures, yes. I, I think this is a great idea. Anything like um, Madam President said to protect our babies is very important um, with that. And I think, um, you know, and also just knowing the logistics of, you know, what we're signing off to. But also, how is this going to, who's like paying for this? So, so it, we intend for this to be a capital project for the city. Uh, we want to purchase these items. They would need a vendor to operate them, but this is not a revenue driven uh, sort of program. This is all about safety. So if we can purchase and operate that equipment, we will. There generally is a third party. There's some software involved. Um, but again, the specifics on that, we're absolutely going to be forthcoming and work with you on any of that after the resolution. So so who does the ticket fees go, go to? If assume that somebody is cited. I think you might have been reading ahead. Um, <laughs> the So generally speaking um, when things like that are collected they may end up in the general fund uh, the funds from this we would seek authorization to divert directly back to safety programs so not uh, disappearing into a general account but going right back into traffic safety programs so there is a small revenue for this there w yeah, if, there, if there's a citation and there's a fee associated, yes, um, and any fee and collected. That, that it wouldn't be because we don't want people speeding. Exactly, but. and as it relates to the fees and the citations, generally speaking, what we've seen is that one to two citations is all that drivers uh, tend to incur. These technologies readily correct the behaviors that they target, so the speeding or stale red light running. They are very effective. We don't have a lot of recidivism, um, even with very low fees that we see in other communities. So this goes to SPD, and then they issue the violation, they send it to more. X person through email, mail. How, how do you get them to actually, um, how do people pay for it? How do they know that, they, that they're getting a, a ticket? Uh, they will be issued that citation generally via mail, but again, uh, the specifics on that, if, if we need to work on something different or look into the details, we absolutely can do that. How would you know who's driving? It doesn't matter. It's not, it does not relate to the operator. It it's relates to the vehicle itself. The vehicle so, right, so there's a registration on file. That's where the item goes. Okay. That's why you don't have your car. Okay. So, what? Maybe I'm, I'm a little... It's very similar to the tolls. <laughs> I, I, I might be a little, you know, behind. Um, so I'm going to need a little bit more. I know it's not the flashing thingies, okay? So what exactly is this technology? This is camera technology. Okay, okay. And it'll be in the school zones. In the school zones, easy to see, big signage. It doesn't sneak up on you. It is very conspicuous. Is it going to look like the police cameras? No, it doesn't look like the uh, police cameras. <laughs> okay. So do we have anything right? So, like I said, I love the idea to protect our children. But until, because this is a process, so obviously you need us, and in this legislation state, there's a process. It's going to take a minute before this happens. Do we have anything in place now with the lights or in the school zones that are now to protect our babies? As far as that, like, is there anything we can modify, change, support that so we can? So. In a parallel track to this, um, we work with SPD to make sure that school zones are up to date, uh, meeting the most current guidelines, replacing signage. If there's a knockdown, if something's faded, if we need to make adjustments at an intersection, we will do that. Um, we have a number of school zones across the city. Uh, we work on all of them. 
we can't just snap our fingers and make it happen. But again, that's why we rely on SPD as well as others. Why not? <laughs> there, uh, there's only two of well, us. There's a lot are, to get. It's okay. We'd have to get to everyone. I mean, but we do work. We work at a feverish pace, especially when it comes to schools. I know school zone items because they're a, a major safety component. And so, as part of this, um, the school zones wouldn't really change significantly it's not as if we're going to make school zones 10 miles an hour all across the city they would remain essentially as they are now this is just one more tool that you, well i'm not against 10 miles an hour near school zones so let me ask you this question jeremy or or even neil if you can answer this so you i know you guys you're looking at this correct so i know that you've looked at some of the data correct so where have you found the most violations in which particular area of the school zones? That's an interesting question. Um, typically speaking, where you see issues are near highways where you have reductions in speed. And so that's similar to where we would want to place school radar sign or the uh, radar signage where you may be getting off 690 and now you're on Teal Avenue and you need to be reminded that it's not 55 miles an hour anymore. You're down to 30. You're going by Henniger. It's 20. So, so you have the data to support that. Yes. So the, they would mostly arterials and higher volume roadways, similar to ones like the Teal, like the Geddes. Um, yeah, Bellevue and Rosary, Jesus. It's Delaware Highway, Delaware, yeah. Get it, yeah. 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 At what point? At what point? <coughs> then the, the how, how fast you go changes from the school to where? Like three miles, five miles. How, how does it work? So there are very specific uh, dimensions on how large a school zone can be and it's based on the location of the school and New York State sets those dimensions. So we can't pull a school zone two miles away from the school. It's about 1100 feet either side. Um, that is where the school zone would start. You would see the reduced speed limit and as part of a school zone we can only lower that 10 miles an hour. So normally it would be 20 miles an hour, but on a James Street where it's posted 35, it's 25 miles an hour, but it's a 10 mile an hour reduction. Another question. Oh, okay. that, uh, it, it captures the violation is registered three miles away from the camera location. So. I think I, I think I know the one you're you're uh, referring to. So what a lot of the research found was that in terms of violators, the registered address is typically three miles or more away from that school zone. And what that means is that it's often visitors. It might be commuters. It might be people who are just passing through that community and who might not necessarily live within it. Three miles is a long way, especially in terms of a school zone or neighborhood to neighborhood. And so at what, at what given time does those cameras only be operated during school hours? You know, be, to be turned off or whatever, like what, how does, what is the operation right. behind that? Um, right. Yeah. This would operate during school hours. Which would be from what? School hours are defined as 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. by New York State. So they would be operated from 7 to 6. It, right. And the reasons for that is... Uh, you have school. You have children walking to school during the a.m. rush, which is that 7:30 to 8:30, and also you tend to have after-school activities, mm -hmm. which tend to let out again in the p.m. rush. So you want to make sure that uh, you're keeping kids safe, or you have this technology working whenever we can anticipate people walking in or around those schools. Glad and you said is that, that just for the I need to piggyback on yours because you talked about the kids coming out at six o'clock, right? So. Some of our kids are dropped off by the school buses to the different community centers. So how are we looking at those intersections? We didn't include the community centers in this, but if you want us to include the community centers, we absolutely will because if they're operating after school programs, right. um, that's again another main safety area it wouldn't be technically a school zone but there are potentially other well, things Weeks we could is do connected to the northeast community center mm -hmm. uh, syracuse community i mean southwest all of those get 
bunches of kids dropped off on school buses. That's God too. So yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, the Methodist we, Church with the school. Yeah. Yep. We can absolutely take a look at uh, after school. And also about uh, this is also going to be only operated during the school year, or summers included in it as well. Um, it would, typically speaking, it is intended to operate during the school year or if there's a dedicated school function. So that could include summer school uh, at the campuses that have it or any other event. Say there's a, I mean, not just in summer, say there's a, a, a seven o'clock football game on a Friday at Geddes. Mm -hmm. That counts as a school function. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So there, so there, sorry, one more. So there would be, uh, I don't know if I skipped over it or whatever, but there will be signages to let them know, to let operators know that those are activated. Absolutely, there are there are some very uh, specific and exhaustive regulations that we need to abide by, which includes advance notice that you're coming up on an area, um, posting well in advance of before the technology is even installed. Um, as well as where the technology is. So it is very apparent. Um, I mentioned earlier, it doesn't sneak up on you. you know, what's, what's the cost to us? What's the cost on us to maintain it and keep it, keep it running? That's a great question. That's what we will look at in phase two uh, or, or in the next step after this resolution because we didn't want to start having premature discussions with anyone who's, who has the cameras available and uh, other municipalities can be a little tight-lipped when it comes to uh, costs. So gotcha. I, I got three questions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you for that question. Okay, the first one is, Chief, what does this, what does this do to you and your staff? Well, Rich Shaw, First Deputy Chief. So uh, we don't know yet. Um, when I was reading all the background on this, this could be done by a police officer, or it could be done at the Department of Transportation. Other municipalities have done it. So I don't know if you necessarily need a police officer. Maybe we would hire like a special police officer or a community service officer or somebody else to, to monitor this. And so I envision it not being a draw on our police officer resources. Okay, because I, I see it as you know, as you collect this data and citation need to be sent out. That, that, that's, that's manpower right there. Yes. And processing. Something that I, I don't know if, if your team is equipped to add this on. We would probably need uh, an additional person to do this, um, depending on the volume of it. Um, so the tickets are kind of, to your point, Councillor Hogan, uh, the tickets are more akin to a parking ticket than a moving violation. So you get the plate, verify the plate, yep, it's on a white Subaru, that's a white Subaru. And then you find out where the registered owner lives and you would send the ticket to the registered owner. It doesn't matter who's driving it, it goes to the registered owner. So that process is pretty simple. That would only take a couple minutes, to be honest with you, per vehicle. And we're hoping there's not going to be a lot of it. I, I, Looks like, like the, it's like the throughway. You go on a throughway, you don't have that sticker. Right. Yeah. You won't get something. In the, yeah. well, the data shows that, that it starts a little bit higher, but in short order, it drops way down. So People who would pick get the up points quick. on their license? Then? Would anybody there's get no points, points on your license for, for, for school zone violation? There's no points. No, sir. Because oh. it's more of maybe, a should, maybe the state should change that. <laughs> It's more akin to a parking ticket. We got to get the permission first, at Council Hogan. What's that? We got to get the permission first. You yeah, know, the city. Right. Yeah. To change that. That would probably be a more <laughs> viable. Uh, Whose license would you put it on? Well, that's what I mean. That's that's. You thing. don't know who the driver is. But I mean, t if you one of your police officers right now stop somebody out of Delaware, you know, going past Delaware School, sixty miles an hour, that person would get a ticket, to correct. And that person, I think, probably should have a situation like that. Probably should have some points on their license. They, I'm sure they would. They can't not speak it for a judge, but that yeah. process you're describing yeah. still can be used. Yes, right now, but that takes and, a police officer. Yep. Yeah. But for example, we had just had a, I got a, a feedback on a complaint today of, of a stop sign at uh, Rockland and uh, I forget what this cross street was. They spent six and a half hours over there and wrote three tickets. Yeah, so see. it's a big, that's not a, a good use of manpower. Mm. So
So with the, with this thing, obviously we'd have to RFP it to some outfit that does this, correct? So that that would cost money. So we'd end up having to probably bond. I don't know where we get the cash for this. And we're, we're coming up for, and I think this is a great idea. I agree with all my counselors. We should have this. But I mean, we should be cognizant of what's going to cost us when we're coming to the budget season. So if we have an estimate, and you know, I was just talking to Greg out there, and he says that you think it's going to be revenue neutral. Yes. And what kind of stats do we get on that? I don't have the data with me, but. I I don't have the data with me, but we can look for the data from other communities that have implemented programs that, ha that find that the revenue covers the cost of the service and then any excess that would occur would be driven, as I mentioned, back to traffic safety initiatives. It's disheartening that this would be able to, you would be able to pay for it yeah. for tickets. That's it's what's scary about it. That's how many people are speeding by. That. Right. That's what's scary about it. So just, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, so if, if somebody doesn't pay for the ticket, what happens? Collection is always one of the challenges, and so you move so through the collection just, process. Okay, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to follow the same procedure like the, yep. the, what you do with parking, right? Yep. Are the fees going to be the same for the one ticket that you get in the beginning? Are the, the tickets are going to have the same fee as always? Or? That's all to be determined. Okay. So, just to recap, oh, sorry. Oh, you got one more question. Oh. Man, you taking too long with your three questions. The other question is, you know, uh, with, with this being uh, an initiative to help our community and the school district, is there a way we could collaborate with school district in terms of their capital funding? You know, it, it's, is, is that even possible? Rather than us just taking on the cost, is there a way? I think it's a question for us. I, 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 I don't think it's it, it, the, the, a traffic safety initiative in our right of way would not be considered something the district okay. would share costs in. Okay. So agree with that. I do, uh, Mr. Chair. I have a one quick item of clarification because uh, President Hudson earlier asked about. Uh, home rule, any home rule requirements or rights that we might have. I did speak with Assemblymember Magnarelli's office to confirm that this resolution is being requested by the Assemblymember to develop and draft the legislation that would then get a bill number in the Assembly and the Senate. And once bill numbers are assigned and legislation is complete, we would have the need to approve final home rule legislation for the actual ordinance or legislate, not an ordinance in this case, the law that goes before the state. I'm glad Thank you said you. that because yeah. that was going to be my next question. Yeah. So for the resolution, we'll do the resolution, but we get full discretion on how we want this program to, to be. Implementation Correct. has to go through here. And that'll be a yes. And yes. we don't need permission from the state, just <laughs> clarification, right? Well, we need permission from the state to be able to implement the program, and that's what the legislation would represent. But the specifics on how, where, wh how many, that is fully up to the city. It's, it's okay. a council item. So just making sure. One other thing for my fellow council. You done? You got to, you done? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, one other thing that I would like to just take into consideration because um, uh, Madam President said about um, after school programs, but even our parks, right? So, in the area where our parks are, you ever go through the park and you see it flying through the parks, right? And we got seniors, we got people walking, we got, you know, our parks are supposed to be neighborhoods, you know, place. I want the message to be around our schools and in our places where our children and people are trying to, like, you know, neighbors that you can't come through here speeding. Just like people know when you get to that bridge that everybody keeps thinking they can run through in Liverpool. <laughs> that bridge. We, you know, the word is, people know, uh oh, we're going through Liverpool, we gotta slow it down. No, right? they don't. Um, they keep tearing it up. The bridge, yeah, they ain't get the last <laughs> But there's speed limit, right? People slow down because they know, they know that's the same, that's the kind of message we gotta get out for. Get there. <laughs> you know, me, I already know, I slow down. So that's the part I just like to think about, like our parks, especially like our, um, Sheila, not Sheila, yeah, Sheila, higher, Onondaga, you know, where people are flying through all the time, they drive all crazy through there. Absolutely, we can take a look at the parks, uh, work with the, Parks Department on that, uh, see if they have anything for us, but yeah, fully I understand. I got a quick question for Chief Schaff, right? 
Um, and Amir, I think you're on this one too, but when we talk about, I'm trying to get this picture. I know there are cameras and we're gonna have the cameras for the license plate readers. Are these the same types of technologies? Uh, they're not, they have different uses. So the way this works from what I'm reading and I'm new to this process is you have two cameras, right? One's focused on the license plate and one is focused on the vehicle in and of itself. But it reads the license plate. It reads the license plate, the data storage, uh, there's some specific rules on it too. I think it can only be stored 30 or 90 days or something. It has to be destroyed. Uh, that's, that's state law stuff. Um, Will they communicate with each other? I don't know the answer to that. Okay, so you're saying what you're saying, I want to come back to what you just said. So you guys have a plan? I mean, I know this is premature, but do you have a plan for the data storage and deletion? We don't, but at this current time, but moving forward, absolutely we will. And it is not our intent to use this technology to track Because they seem like sister info. parallel things that we're doing. They do, but I don't know if they communicate with each other. I don't know the answer to that. It's definitely something we can figure out and put up guardrails around as we move we move forward with this program. Um, specifics around any data or any info, anything like that. I wonder would the state give us startup money for everything? Yeah. You know. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. Grants? Are there going to be any grants available for any of these cameras? We will look feverishly for state grants. Any state dollars we can find, we will use. They need to be. Should we write a resolution to the state to give, them, give us some money? <laughs> Boy, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Well, any other questions? All right. Well, thank you, Commissioner Rubbs. Thank, 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 thank you, thank you, Neil. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. This concludes our meeting here. Thank you. Thank you all. Listen, you and I both When I tell you, I wish I could.